Hey guys, Tough Thumbs here. So, I want to do some tutorials, so I'm going to do it. Uh, this is uh, basically, we start from the beginning, the Anzo pattern. And I just have some spare scales, with which I have a million of. Uh, so this one is a, a Cold Steel Recon Scout, I believe. Uh, not a Recon Scout. Recon 1 or whatever the hell it's called. So, I'll do this the simple way, and I am sacrificing my health for this video with no mask on so you can hear me. Uh, I may turn the fan on if it gets too crazy, uh, but, you know, I won't be able to hear shit. Uh, so basically, I'll show you the basic way to do it. Uh, well, I started with the Dremel and uh, a little sanding drum here. So basically, you can just get a nice coarse coarse texture. I don't know what the, te what the I think it's like 80 or 50. But uh, basically, I want to start with an 80. And... Um, you know, I see a lot of people when they do this, uh, including myself. Uh, you can go back on Blade Forms and look at Tough Thumbs on there, and I have some uh, pimped Tenacious and Resilience I did. They're terrible. So, uh, you know, if you don't get it right away, then, you know, <laughs> trust me, it's, it's not easy. And uh, a lot of people make mistakes with this because the teeth kind of go back and forth, and there'll be spaces in between them, or they reach all the way over. You don't want to do that. So I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to start with the first side. You want to start, basically, you have a like brick, you know, like a cube uh, of G10. You want to make sure you're finished with, you're completely finished with all your your holes and your countersinking and you put the knife together as a big brick and it works perfectly and it locks up perfectly. Because the last thing you want to do is have to put this like that when there's a pattern on it and it's wobbling all around when you're trying to do something on the inside. Uh, or you have too many shapes so when you go to counter bore, you know, it catches and moves around when you're trying to do something and you mess things up. So make sure everything's done first before you do the fun part, which kind of sucks, but it's just the way it is. Now, you don't ramp the Dremel all the way up. I mean, I don't. Uh, I got it like medium. I have the Dremel 4000, of which I've had about seven, uh, including about six others that aren't, that weren't the Dremel 4000. They're not very, they're good machines, but they, they have issues, especially the 4000. And make sure you open the package and look in there before you uh, buy it, because a lot of times, well, hey, yeah, more than more than three times I've opened it up and there's been uh, a different Dremel in there that someone's repackaged and put back. So, yeah, you know, I, I actually checked before I bought this one at Home Depot, and there it was a, a it was no, it was a 4100, and there was a 4000 in it. So, you know, they were surprised, even though they shouldn't be. All right, so I'm gonna try to hopefully I can explain what I'm doing while I do this. What are we up to here? Got yeah, between uh, 15 and 20. So it doesn't really matter where you start. I start, I always like starting uh, where it might be more difficult, like in a choil or something. But you know, I'll start right here. But you try to avoid going directly onto the holes. So I'll show you down here. So you're going down directly onto the hole. Then your 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 screw is basically going to sit up. So either want to counterbore that area uh, so you don't get down to the counterbore. Like, watch. If I'll do this one as counterboard. A little lighter. So you can still, there's, there's still a counterbore there. So you don't want to go past that. It's a little harder to do, but kind of change the sizes as you go on. So I'll just start. So what you want to do is, I'm not going to care about the counterbore. You don't want to go all the way across at all. Don't go all the way across. Don't go all the way down on the side, uh, just at a light angle, and you start digging in a little bit, and you start working it back and forth, and you'll just see, you kind of at an angle, a very slight angle, I prefer to hold like this. And then when you do the next one, you want to hit the corner right there in the corner, just right next to it, just dig in a little bit, and then start moving back and forth, and you'll see they're right next to each other, not too deep. Same thing again. Oh man, that smells good. Hopefully this fan won't kill everything. Just light, you don't just press and jam in there because it's no good.
Yeah. All right, so you got side one here, and uh, as you can see, there's no there's no peel ply shown in between here. If you see peel ply here, you know you didn't press hard enough. So when you press it, basically the the uh, diameter of the wheel just gets wider. So if you have an area where it's too thin, uh, you know, you press down a little bit more and and keep going, and it'll it'll expand it out a little bit. Um, but at the angle you want it to come to a, a tapered point like this, see how it tapers down. But as you see, when you do it, they all look straight. Even though when you put that first initial one in there, it's kind of like a more of an oval, you know, more gradual taper. Where now it's just straight to a taper, and that will change when you do side two. So side two, obviously, you want to start in between, directly in between uh, the two points there, right in the butt crack there. Just go right in that, right in that butt crack. Alex knows what I'm talking about. He taught me that, that terminology. Just joking, Alex. Um, also, guys, make sure you wear proper protection for your eyes and a respirator. I prefer 3M respirators uh, with the double filters on them. They just work really good. And uh, as far as I can tell, I've been doing this for a long time, G10 does not do anything to your skin. Um, you want to make sure it's, you know, when you get in the house, you know, wipe it off first or blow it off first because um, it'll stay all over you and it smells and it's still on you but it doesn't itch or anything like that. Some people can get itchy from it. I have never gotten itchy from it so all right. Yeah you don't want to breathe it in. It's not going to kill you but you know over time it definitely will. It's not good for you at all. All right so side two directly in the middle same thing and you want to go over past where the uh, the middle of that ass crack is a little bit farther past it. Kind of eye it as the middle. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, I do this on the grinder more than anything. See now, it's not far enough over, but it's very easy to lose where you are. You can rub your finger over it and you can see like the tips better because the grease from your fingers will bring it out a little bit. And when you get in these curves here, guys, uh, it's gonna, you're gonna wanna start going like this, but don't. Just go straight on, and uh, it'll work. If you start moving around when you're trying to dig in, just hold as still as you can over top of that one spot. Get a little gr a little groove going, like a guide, and uh, you'll go right in there. Now, when you get areas like this, it gets longer, so you got to kind of go of more of an angle or less of an angle. I mean, I mean, excuse me. Kind of sucks. It gets hard to do that, so I, I recommend like starting with simple scales. And I really lightly go through each one again. Of course, you go slower than that. I've done this a million times, so. Because if you do it too slow when you're doing this, you'll get gouges in there. So this definitely, I'm very lightly just getting in the groove there and just moving it back and forth. And if you stop, you're gonna get gouges in there. So at this point, you got your Anzo pattern here, and it's looking good. I mean, I like to look in uh, you know, the light. You can see just a really nice standard Anzo pattern. Uh, you don't want if you dig too deep. You got huge peaks here, and then you sand them down. It looks like shit. Um, so you want to keep it at this point, and just don't dig it too deep. A lot of people just go way too deep on the side there. See how it's still? There's nothing really popping out at you that's really sticking up high. Uh, everything's pretty uniform, but that you know that comes with practice. So when you get to the top here, just different stuff you can do. I hate when people go like this and then they go around. I think it looks bad. Um, when I get to that, I still got some peel ply up there. And I'll do this. Just basically take it off.
basically without taking too much off there. I just took that off. Now a lot of things, a lot of times I see people also when they're doing the Anzo pattern is not like just taking off the, you know, breaking the corners off of these. Uh, so basically all you want to do with that is just swipe it like this. Just at a nice angle, a lot steeper than that, but not too much. And you don't want to dig in because you'll lose the shape. So at an angle, you know, so this one's already beveled a little bit. It'll be straight up and across a lot sharper. But uh, don't dig. Yeah, kind of let it glide over it because then... Uh, then you'll start getting it nice and smooth. Go drop the Dremel. The quicker you do it like this, uh, the more uniform it is. And yeah, I'm gonna go a little deeper on the inside areas here. And in these, you know, I just you kind of scoop it in there. But don't go too far, right? like if you hit right here too far, it'll get really narrow. So you want to be careful when you're there. At all corners like this where they intersect, it's easy to get super thin and ruin it. See how thin that is? So you want to focus more in the middle, just kind of touch it lightly, then dig in and touch it out there. So there you go. Now you have, you know, a nice scale with an Anzo pattern on it. Um, we're at 12 minutes here. So now the diamond pattern, guys. Um, so I can do this through this video because it's basically. In my opinion, the Enzo pattern is sort of like the, the original pattern. It's kind of like the, the base of all other patterns uh, as far as Dremel patterns go. Um, so the diamond pattern I simply did by, by accident. I was knocking off the tips of these. And you dig a little further and you start to get what looks like diamonds. I'll show you. It's very easy. It's basically right in the middle there where the tip is of, between each one. And you go, you do a groove again really lightly to where they intersect, right there. That point where they, the two parts intersect. This is a little harder because you gotta get a little nice notch going there. A lot slower. I mean, I'd wait till you get the Anzo pattern down before you do this. I'm not used to doing it on this table here. You make sure you got a notch first before you move forward. You know, you, before you get, you know, you make sure your Dremel's digging in a little bit. It's gonna be shorter here. Of course, so I don't go as far. Same with the other way. They can be like little short notches, and they'll still look uniform. So you got your diamond pattern. I think you can make that out on camera. You can see, when you look through your one you missed here, or I missed there. So it's good to have nice lighting, because uh, it's definitely, you can see if your pattern's working out nicely. It's got kind of like a sand dune look to it. You know, it looks really nice. So, so you got your double diamond pattern there, which is, and basically you can get real thin, so you don't want to go too thin when you're doing the double diamond pattern, like on the edge there. So you want to make sure your Anzo pattern was nice and thick, 
Uh, if you dig down a little further with the Enzo pattern, you get wider, but you know you gotta make sure you have a nice big uh, or thick scale on there. Um, also, you can change, you know, sizes of your drums. Uh, you can use a bigger drum on there, uh, which Dremels I don't think can handle. I use the grinding uh, small arm attachment, not this small one. I do use this small one sometimes, but usually just the regular uh, half inch uh, works fine, or inch I think it is. Uh, just kind of do everything like this instead along the side. But you know, with the Dremel. It's easy, and basically, if you can do it with a Dremel, you'll basically understand how to do it with a grinder. It's kind of the same concept. So now, at this point, uh, you could be done with it. Um, personal favorite part has always been just you know throwing a little bit of lube on there, and uh, you can do it with your finger. I use a paintbrush, like a really like a small art paintbrush or whatever. Like this. You know, you just get it on there. So you don't have to do any sanding if you're uniform. You have a uniform pattern on here. Uh, I like to sandblast it at this point before I lube it up. Because uh, the sandblast brings out these little layers and everything. This looks really nice. Kind of gives it a more machine look to it, or a more natural look to. Uh, it kind of hides all of your uh, gouging and stuff. But, I mean, if you get it right, you won't see... You know, I never changed the grid or anything like that, but you don't see any any gouges in there at all. So you can do it with just one grit. And uh, if you hit this like with a light grit here, like it'll bring it'll flatten the tops of these and polish them a little bit. It's a good look. Uh, this gives you a little bit of grip, but it's not too much. And if you do feel like there's peaks on there, you just want to break them off. You want to make sure you just hit it lightly with sandpaper so everything's rounded in a way. So yeah, there's there's your uh, Anzo pattern slash double diamond pattern. Um, yeah, I hope that helped, guys. And I uh, just uh, if you have any questions, hopefully I can get on this comments and and uh, answer some questions for you. God, this lighting's terrible, isn't it? Peace.